that's ever seen Jackie's physique or my physique when you know can attest the fact that it's pretty hard and muscle you know it just comes uh, it comes through time you know working the muscle uh, day after day uh, getting the quality in there. You see some people that gain 30 pounds or something like that in a year, but you know a lot of times it's uh, you know bloated looking tissue, not a lot of muscle quality and density in it. And uh, you know, this is reflected, you know, uh, reflective of certain you know certain uh, different approaches to training. Speaking of approaches to training, uh, let me tell you a little bit about my training philosophy. I think it can be summed up in a nutshell in the following statement. I go into the gym and I train the muscle as hard as possible using the heaviest weight possible in strict form in the shortest amount of time. Okay, I try to generate as much intensity as possible. It's been proven that muscular hypertrophy, muscular growth if you will, is directly proportional to training intensity. That is, the harder that you work within a certain amount of time, the more results you get. It's not how long you work out, it's how hard you work out that causes the change. Let's use, uh, let's examine the, uh, let's examine the definition and then uh, I'll give you some examples, okay? Definition is train the muscle as hard as possible. Okay, that means that in each and every set, you're going to be training as uh, hard as humanly possible, pushing the muscle to the point of failure, the point at which you cannot perform another repetition. Okay, you should never quit the set before you reach that point. After you're sufficiently warmed up, you go in and you start your first set, you go until the point of failure, the point at which you cannot perform another repetition. Okay? Then I rest only long enough to catch my breath, you know, long enough to, uh, uh, you know, get rid of that oxygen uh, debit that you build up during the set, and then I can perform my second set in the uh, same fashion, okay? Now, I use the heaviest, uh, heavier weight as possible. That means that I select a weight initially that is 80% of uh, my maximum for one single repetition. This initial weight will allow me to perform eight to 10 strict repetitions, okay, before I fail. And then on each succeeding set, I remove approximately 10% of the weight. That means that if I, uh, after a proper warm up, I start out with a 300 pound bench press and I perform eight repetitions and fail on the eighth, then uh, I will rest only long enough to catch my breath and on the second set, I'll use 10% less weight. 10% of 300 is 30 pounds or approximately 270 pounds on the second set. So you see, I start with my heaviest training weight first and decrease about 10% on each succeeding set. It's kind of like a reverse pyramid type of a system. I believe that all of the sets leading up to that maximum set in the conventional pyramid weight training type of system uh, are really kind of useless. Okay, they uh, they waste too much energy. Uh, I think that after you've had a proper warm up, it's time to go to the set that produces the most results, which are the heavy sets. Okay, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with the conventional pyramid type system, this is a system where let's say you do. 135 for 20 repetitions, then maybe 155 for 15 repetitions, then 185 for 12, so forth and so on. So you reach the peak weight where you're performing six to eight repetitions, and then you decrease the weight. Well, instead of performing all this excess work here, I start at the top, okay, where, you know, where my body's being taxed the most with the heaviest weight, and then decrease on each succeeding set. So on any given set, my body is working as hard as possible, going all out. Okay, you have to stress the muscle up just enough so the body can recuperate and rebuild the muscle. But if you step over that, then you overtrain and the body has to start all over again. Okay, you backslide if you will. Okay, so keep in mind that overtraining, doing too much, doing too much exercise, too much volume of exercise, the biggest culprit in, you know, uh, in the biggest impediment in bodybuilding success. 80% of the people I run across overtrain. Okay, so keep that in mind. Any questions? How do you warm up? Okay, warm up consists of uh, doing um, uh, one or two sets with a lighter weight of the same exercise that I'm going to perform. Once the muscle is warmed up and elastic, and I also stretch, uh, then I perform the. Uh, the, uh, I start performing with the, with the heaviest set first. Um, you know quite a bit about stretching. That's right. Um, the analogy about the sun is really good about training. It's really easy 
um, at a beginning level to put yourself um, in someone else's level and try to do it that way. Uh, you cannot skip the basic steps first. If you do, you're going to end up proceeding back to that point some uh, point in time. Uh, whenever I started gymnastics, I, I was in it for maybe a year and a half. Why do we have to keep doing these somersaults? I want to get to the, the hand, the, you know, handspring. Well, because I wasn't doing the somersaults right. And if I can't do a somersault right, how can I do a handspring? Um, I think that's the same, the same idea. You've got to keep sight of where you are and where you want to go and how long it's really going to take you. Um, be realistic and um, you know, assess your strengths and weaknesses and your athletic background, just because you may have an athletic background, doesn't mean that you can jump into an advanced bodybuilding program. And believe it or not, for people who want to both gain and lose weight, um, you know, the same basic exercises work for everyone. It's the diet that's different. I'll go over that later. As far as warming up, um, whenever I warm up, I warm up by increasing my body temperature, not necessarily by stretching. And I do that, um, it depends on what part of the season it, it is and how heavy I'm lifting, but I ride the bike, not in high intensity, but I spin just to get my body temperature warmed up. Now what this does is when your body is warmed up, uh, get your heart rate elevated, um, I think uh, then you're able to stretch your muscle more without injury. So then I might, my stretching is actually active type stretching at the beginning of the workout where the stretching I do duplicates what I'm going to do in the exercise. Um, for instance, if I'm going to do dumbbell bench presses, my first two sets will be very, um, I, I will pause at the bottom of the rep. Not relaxing, but I will stretch the muscle with tension, which is called dynamic stretching. Whenever you have stretching through a point like that where you use the strength of your muscle to stretch, then your muscle's not going to be very up to tear if it's strong and flexible at that range of motion. So if I do any uh, static or still type stretches, that's usually at the end of the workout. Even before legs, I don't usually do hurdle stretches or anything like that. Yeah, so it's like the muscle becomes more pliable when you get the blood flowing through it. And at that point is uh, when you can stretch it. Is that, is that right? Yeah. I think that stretching, static stretching doesn't really have a real, it's a waste of time if, you're, if your muscles are cold. I think you're fighting against a lot of um, tension in your muscle, which could result in a tear. And then, of course, you're not going to be able to stretch that muscle for a while. Questions? How many sets for body parts? Typically, I perform uh, three sets of three different exercises per body part. Uh, some muscles more, some muscles less. Let me give you an idea. Um, after I warm up, okay, you know, we, uh, we start counting sets. The warm-up sets don't count. And uh, typically for the chest, I'll do about uh, eight, eight sets. For the shoulders, about eight, ten sets. Then for the bicep and triceps, six sets. For the quads, six to eight sets. For the calves and the abs, six sets, eight sets, twice a week. The back gets 12 to 15 sets. And that's because it's comprised of so many different interlocking muscle groups that I don't consider it one body part. You know, I feel that I have to work my traps and my lats and my rectors, and they're, they're all different muscles. You know, they can't really be categorized as just one muscle. Okay, so that, that'll give you an idea. I don't believe in a lot of volume, but I do believe in going to failure on each and every set, training as hard as possible on each set. Okay. 